that same progression we were doing when we switched over to minor, except now instead of being in a C minor, we're playing in A minor, right? So we're playing this right here. So there's our four, one. Chord progressions are like sentences. They are made up of words, and those words are made up of letters. We use notes to make up chords, just like we use letters to make up words. When we form multiple chords together, it forms somewhat of a musical statement. There's no minimum number of chords for it to be defined as a progression. Technically, you could have a one chord chord progression, but two to four chords is really all you need to make most popular music. Chord progressions sound great when it feels like there are small movements between the notes and the chords. So this relates to a concept called voice leading, and that's how each individual note in a chord moves from one chord to the next. So practicing inversions and different voicings from the shapes part of the class will help you create variations of chord progressions. So let's take two chords and play it like 10 different ways. We'll start by playing two chords in root position and then try inverting one or both of the chords as well as trying different voicings to see how many ways we can make that same two chord progression sound different. So let's start with a simple two chord chord progression and let's see how far we can stretch it. And we'll look at this in a major key as well as in a minor key. So let's start with a four, one progression. Now it might sound kind of vanilla, a little bland on its own, but let's start by just inverting one of the chords. So let's go from a four to a one. Now it's starting to sound more interesting already. Instead of four, one, we have four, one. And this is the one chord in first inversion because we have the root up on top. So make sure and get familiar with the octave shape, get familiar with the different inversion shapes of everything. So again, we have four, one. Okay, let's do the opposite. Let's invert the four chord. So maybe we'll take the top note down an octave. So we'll play the four here and then the one here. Now we have the bass note. The lowest note stays the same. So we have the four, the second inversion, because the fifth is in the bass, and the one in root position. So our two versions, we had four, one, and then we had four, one. And you could stretch the progression out to where it alternates between them as you get more comfortable with this. So for example, the first time around, you could play four, one, and the second time around, you could play four, one. So even though it's the same progression, it has a different feeling and a different movement to it. It's like a different way of saying the same thing. Let's try some other things. Let's try going four, one. So ooh, now we got the third up on top right? We could even do four, one. So we do four in first inversion, and then the one with the third on top. Let's try it with the third on top on the four. So there's the four and the one. And maybe if we take the fifth up an octave, that'll feel a little less jumpy. So let's go four, one. Then we could do four, one. So even by playing the exact same chord progression three or four different ways back to back, it makes it stretch out and become more interesting to listen to over time. Now let's take it one step further and let's add some sevenths. So we'll start in root position. We have our four, right? We're playing a major seven and the one major seven. Four, one. So let's play around with different ways to voice or invert these to make them sound more interesting. So, so let's start by taking this root of the four up an octave and the third up an octave. So we can go four, one. See how small that movement is? It's really these two notes are moving from here to here. That's the, the difference between the four and the one chord. So this is the four in second inversion. Right, so major seven in second inversion. And this is the one in root position. So there's our root position voicings. And this makes it sound like the four is moving up to the one because we have these pitches moving up versus moving down from the one. So you can trick your ears and you can make different emotions by using these inversions. Let's look at a few more iterations we could do. We could do four, one. That's a very smooth, solid progression. We have a four in root position, and then 
we have the one with the third up on top. And then you can open this up. We could do four, one. So now we put the seventh and the third up on top. And then we could do four with the third on top and the one, the third and the seventh on top. So let's take it back down to root. Now let's do root on the four, third on top on the one. Second time around, we could do root on the four, third and seventh on top on the one. And then the third time we could go third on top on the four, third and seventh on top on the one. And then we could bring it back down, four, one. So having these different options and different variations of voicings in your bag as you go in to create a chord progression, it's going to help you make it sound more interesting and help to tell a story that the song is telling. Okay, so let's switch over to minor key and let's look at some 4-1 progressions in a minor key. So same idea. So here's a 4, here's a 1. Let's do the same thing we did in major. So we could do the 4 in root position. The 1 is in first inversion. So that has a little different feeling to it. Let's do something like this, right? So we have the root up an octave and the third up an octave. So we could do four, one. Then we could go four, one. Then we could go four, one. So we just moved that four, one progression and made it feel like it was falling downwards just by using inversions and placing them in different places. Okay, let's try it with some seventh chords. So here's a four, one. And we can make this less jumpy if we take something like the third up an octave. So you voice the one chord like this, root, fifth, seventh, third. So we could go four, one, sprinkle some notes on top. Let's go four, one. Okay, let's try another voicing on the four. Let's try something where we take the root up an octave. So we have four, one. Okay, we could also do something like the third of the four is on top, and then the seventh of the one is on top. So let's go four, one, four, one. And to put this all in perspective, if you wanted to play a 4-5-1 in a minor key while looking at the major layout, just to keep it all consistent, you can use the relative minor scale of any major scale. And that's going to be the 6, right? So this 6 is going to be the relative minor of any major key that you're in. So we can move it over to E-flat. This is going to be the relative minor of E-flat. So here in C major, this is A. And if you think about this as the one, even though it doesn't have that pink color on it, but if you just imagine this is the one, now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right? You have that same minor scale that we have over here. So you can think about it as like that same four, one progression we were just playing. We could do it like four, one. Right, that same progression we were doing when we switched over to minor, except now instead of being in a C minor, we're playing in A minor, right? So we're playing this right here. So there's our four, one. 